The SR-71, with its ominous beauty, is one of the world's classic aircraft. Packed with sophisticated surveillance equipment, the power of its two engines is more than that of a great ocean liner. The airplane is basically 90% titanium inside now. They found out early on that if you use cadmium and scratch it or strike it against titanium, over a long period of time, the airplane will eventually corrode and get stress fractures right where that scratch was. So every tool that the man uses out here on this airplane is cadmium free because of that. Very unique airplane. The skin of the airplane in places is actually the outside of the fuel tank. So once you get this tremendous heating, therefore expansion, contraction when it comes down and cools, it causes a little bit of wear and tear on uh, any place there might be a rivet. We haven't developed the way to stop that fuel leakage over the years, and we don't really get too concerned about it because the fuel's not very volatile. If you threw a match into a puddle of the fuel, the match would go out. They say if you threw a bucket on a roaring campfire, it'd probably put the campfire out. Now, I don't want to try that, but that's what they say. For the men who take the Blackbird for a nine-hour flight to the edge of space, the long preparations are amongst the most meticulous required of any flyers anywhere in the world. These crew members are under the same stresses that astronauts are under. We are at altitudes above 50,000 feet up in the high altitude range near space. In fact, this suit has a pressure differential great enough to go all the way to the moon if necessary. pressure suit provides you your own uh, protection. It's like your own little mini environment. You've got your controllers to maintain your temperature. If you're on a long mission and the, the helmet is extremely heavy right on your shoulders at the base of your neck, if that becomes too heavy, you can actually increase the pressure of your suit and the suit will inflate and take all the weight off your shoulders or wherever. Pressurized leak tank. Take a breath and hold, please. Good, breathe. Going up, system two. These people are not superhumans. In fact, even a few of the crew members you'll see sneaking a little pink rabbit or something into their suit is a good luck charm. They're still human. Uh, they just do a job, and they do it well, and uh, they're very professional at it. In the cockpit, we take aboard uh, tube food. It comes in a giant-sized toothpaste tube, and then you can get everything from butterscotch pudding to beef and gravy to you name it. There's about a selection of 10, 15 items. The food basically tastes like baby food, except for the pudding tastes like pudding. But when you get into the beef and gravies, it's just a bunch of mush, but very tasty, actually. There are airplanes that can go 80,000 plus feet. There are airplanes that can fly about as fast as we do. But the big difference between us and them is that we get up there, we go that fast, we go that high and we stay there. There are those days when you get up, birds are singing, the sun is shining, your breakfast was cooked just the way you like it, everything's on time, and then, after all our pre-flight ground checks, after that three hours, we're finally ready to push the power up and break ground. light at the same time, you can feel the acceleration and you just point the nose at the sky and go. There's nothing, nothing in the world compared to that feeling. Physically, you can't really tell how fast you're going. Uh, you don't have anything to compare it to. There aren't any clouds whizzing by or you don't see the road going by you that close. 
it's mind-boggling actually you're traveling through the air literally faster than a speeding bullet you're covering a mile every two seconds faster than any other aircraft in the world. What more can aviation achieve in its unrelenting quest for speed? We can go as far as man's imagination. We have the capabilities today that if you can think about it, we can do it. We have the materials, the know-how. We have the capabilities today to fly Mach 6, to fly Mach 11. The question is, can we afford it and do we need it? If you have answers to both those questions, I say yes, we can do it.